Good morning, Ed here from Crystal Clear Aquatics. It's a beautiful, sunny, but rather fresh morning. And I'm here in Hampshire, just outside of Basingstoke, working on my next assignment, uh, which I thought I'd share with you guys. So the brief of this job is, it's quite a common one. Uh, a subject, a topic which uh, is frequently encountered with ponds, and that is what to do with the edging of a pond, to conceal the pond liner, um, to make it look a bit more attractive. So you can see here, I'm working on a lovely, lovely little pond. Um, I estimate it to be probably about 700, five to 700 gallons, but I'll find out once it's emptied and drained. Um, lots of nice plants, lovely clear water, been filtered with an Awaza um, filter clear 30,000 unit, which is doing a good job on the pond. Uh, we've got three large gold north in here, and then a few goldfish, Shabunkin, Sarasa Comet, so, so no sort of heavy fish stock. And the pond itself is, is a very attractive feature. But what detracts from it here is the edging. And we've got two issues. One is that the, the edging has really been done with this not particularly attractive um, sort of pebble dashed concrete. And this has literally just been sort of laid on top of the edge of the liner. And that runs all the way around the pond. But the main issue here is that again, there's a visible strip of lining. And this is something that is a problem on many ponds. And it's probably the most important feature of creating an attractive feature. You can get away with a pond that doesn't, you know, hasn't been dug out particularly nicely. You can get away with a liner which is full of creases. But what you can't get away with is the edging. You'll never get away from um, a, a poorly edged pond. And a well edged pond, well planted, with liner that's concealed, will then hide uh, you know, a multitude of, of sins within the pond itself. So the idea with this job is the pond is going to be drained and cleaned and emptied. The fish are going to be set up um, in a, a holding tank for the duration of the job. Uh, and all of this edging, all this concrete and pebble will be carefully broken up and removed from the edge of the pond. And that will allow me to dig down um, a uniform shelf all the way around the edge of the pond on which I can start to build stonework from beneath water level above water level and that will create an attractive natural edge and it will hide the pond liner. So I'll document this as I go and uh, hopefully create a lovely finished result. So you drain the pond out. Surprisingly, quite a, quite a deep pond actually. But in fact, it's been, it's been dug out and constructed very nicely. The edging has been dug and excavated out of the ground incredibly neatly. Um, the shelving is, is uniform, level, thereabouts, and a reasonable size for marginal planting. And what's nice is that the shelving is sloping back away from the centre of the pond, rather than tilting towards the depth of the pond. So you haven't got any risk of marginal plants slipping down and falling in. Um, the main issue here, obviously, you can see is the edging. Um, and this is such a common, common occurrence. People put the pond liner in, and then they build the edging on top of the liner, what is above water level. In my opinion, that's, that's not the best way to do it. So water level is about here, and you're never gonna be able to conceal this. Even with planting, it's very easy for people to say that, you know, oh, the plants will hide it, they'll grow and establish and, and cover it. And, and bits of the liner might get concealed, but there's always gonna be a certain amount on show. And it's not only aesthetics that we need to be concerned about here, but also the integrity, the durability of the pond liner. When you've got a piece of liner which is exposed um, for a length of time to, to sunshine, to the UV. That's going to degrade that section of the pond liner much, much faster than the pond liner beneath water level. So where a, a pond liner, this is a good, this looks like Firestone rubber liner, which would come with a lifetime 30 year warranty. When the liner is exposed to UV like this, this is really going to shorten that lifespan to, you know, maybe 15 or 20 years or so. So we need to be able to start something a few inches below water level. Predominantly rock is the easiest way of, of doing this. Um, so once this is removed, we need to get a uniform shelf down to about this sort of depth so that the stonework, the edging is starting beneath water level. And we can build up from there. And it looks like I've got the luxury here of a reasonable um, off-cut overlap of, of pond liner. And this is always a good lesson when you're building a pond. Don't trim your liner too, too short because in the future you never know what kind of adjustments you might need to make. Because there's a good 
amount of, of overlap here on pond liner. I should have enough to be able to remove this, to be able to dig out some of the ground and still have enough liner to maintain the overall depth of the pond as it was once originally. So, coming on, I've got my holding tank set up for all the fish, they're all out. I've got to crack on now with, with breaking away this, I've got to be very careful, um, of course, if there's creases and, and folds in the pond liner, it's going to make it quite difficult to remove some of this mortar and, and pebbles. Um, and I also have to be very careful with my tools and chisels etc not to then potentially damage the, the pond lining beneath. So I'm doing this by hand rather than using a um, sort of an, a, you know, an electric breaker. I'd rather do it by hand so I can be careful and just break it away slowly in bits and pieces and then once I've cleared all of this I'll be able to assess the liner, um, check it for any damage and then uh, start the excavating. So I'm just beginning the, the breaking process using a, a mallet and a little, a little chisel and I just wanted to point something out which is an absolute no-no whenever you're doing ponds like this and that is something as simple as concreting in a flex like this so the future if ever we had to replace the the pump there's no way of doing so without breaking the concrete away or without cutting the cable and joining it um, a little bit of thought in that you know in the initial construction process putting in just a piece of conduit a bit of garden hose or something that you could then easily feed a cable through is all it takes so never ever do that i'll bring back the summer Look at the weather, how it changes now. Autumn is definitely underway. So yesterday's work was fully draining the pond out, getting rid of all of the, the muck and the debris from the base, setting up the holding tank for the livestock, which are happily sitting in there, removing the concrete surround, that sort of pebble dash concrete slab, that's all gone. And now I'm at a position to start to dig out the shelf that the stonework's going to sit on. But I've had a bit of a surprise. I thought that the edging of the pond looked rather neat and smooth. Too neat and smooth to have just been dug out of the ground. And sure enough, it's a concrete pond, which wasn't expected. So rather than digging out earth, I'll have to be cutting away some of this concrete, but that's not, that's not a major issue. I brought my laser with me which I'll get rigged up on the tripod in the center of the pond and I'll gauge and mark out a line on the on the concrete which is what I will want the the base of the stonework to sit at and I want to make sure that that's a few inches under the water I'll get a, a spray line marked up on there so I've got something physical I can see and then with my disc cutter I'll cut away all that concrete and then dig out the ground behind it so I can start to build up my shelf So the laser's in, I've plotted a, a line all the way around the pond and then I've just highlighted that with a bit of red paint there to make it a bit more visible. I've got to cut away this top section now and that will become the uniform shelf on which I'll build up all that stonework. Where are you? There you go. Well, I've cut away all of the concrete to create this uniform level shelf. Dug away the soil behind it, so I need to give it a good tidy up, get rid of all of the bits of grit and um, concrete and sharp bits and pieces, get the underlay cleaned up, that's really important. We don't want to get any sharp protrusions and bits and pieces caught up on this, and because it's quite a sort of a fibrous material, it's quite easy for sharp bits of grit and stones to stick to that, so that's really important that gets cleaned up. 
So once I've cleaned this up, I can relay the underlay, fold back the lining, fill it up with some water so that the lining fills the void correctly, make a start on building. shelf in preparation of building up the edging and I refilled the pond up to its maximum level. This is really important because you want to make sure that the pond liner um, is, is seated and weighted down correctly before you start to put stonework and, and weight around the outside. So I'm going to drain the pond down now just to, to the six inches or so lower than the shelf level so I can start to build. I think I'm up against it with the weather for the next few days. It looks very threatening so I've got my gazebos and shelters to hand. Um, let's crack on. Well, it was a pretty horrific day yesterday. Uh, it wasn't an awful lot of filming I could get done. A lot of rain, but my new gazebos came in handy. But it's allowed me to, to make progress still. So I had one shelter up over the pond, and one up over my cement mixer with electrics, um, and I've completed a good half of the, the interior rock work and surround some lovely stone here, some fantastic markings and, and fossils in some of this. So I've got to obviously complete this section ideally today. I want to try and incorporate some sort of feature or spill. If you remember the original return from the filter was just returning into the pond and shooting out of a pipe. Uh, I don't want to Sort of make this a bit you know too complex it wasn't in the brief to build a cascade or a waterfall but if i can if i can create some sort of extension of, with a larger flat stone to allow that water to spill over at least it will make more of a feature than the water just pouring straight out of the pipe and it'll help to make you know a nicer sound out of that flow as well um, i'm at the side of the pond now where i have to start thinking about conduits um, inlets and outlets and make sure i incorporate that into the stonework um, so off i go Well, good morning. It's another day on the job. Having had a very biblical weekend of pretty torrential rain, the pond has filled up enormously just from the, from the natural weather. But you can see the pond surround has been completed um, and when the pond has gone up four or five inches over the weekend, it's amazing how much rain we've had. Um, I took Friday off. It's not often I will have a, a rain day, but it was that bad that I decided not to come on site. So the next job is to start to, to deal with this flap of lining around the side of the, the pond here. I want to try and get water level up to a few inches below the top of this stone. Obviously we've got masses of liner to be able to do that. 
Um, you could simply pile up earth behind this just to shore up and hold the liner up, but I would rather have a little bit of protection offered so that in the future, you're not gonna come into contact with the pond liner if you're using you know, digging tools, trails and forks, etc. So I will hold this liner up and then create a small um, sort of concrete wall behind it. And then this interior section here, if there's any gaps, that will also get filled with a little bit of concrete um, so that the soil isn't coming into direct contact with the water uh, and then soaking and sponging the, the water away. You've got the, the conduits, which I need to run some, some strings through to pull the cables. Uh, I've got to sort out the inlet to the filtration system. Uh, I've put in a, a small spill stone, you know, as I say, the, the job the brief, it was never designed to have a cascade, um, but it's much nicer to have some sort of feature from the return from the filter. So being able to have just a little spillstone like this just to displace that water uh, and uh, create a nicer sound than the water pouring out of the, the pipework uh, was something that was easy to do, so that's been done. It's not complete, the stones around the top are just dry laid because we're actually going to be um, replacing and upgrading the filtration. At the beginning of this video, I'd mentioned that it was an Oasa Filter Clear 30,000. Um, and I said that just by, by looking at it without actually looking at the details. And it's not, it's a much smaller model with an 18 watt UV. Um, and ideally this wants to have a slightly bigger system. So we're actually gonna to upgrade to the Filtermatic, uh, which is a pump feed gravity discharge. Um, and because it's a gravity discharge, it means that the water pouring over the cascade will look a lot more natural. It's not gonna be sort of coming out forcefully from the pump. But the disadvantage of it is it's a much, much broader, much bigger diameter pipe um, for the outlet. So I've left that stone dry so that when we install the filtration system in a week or so's time, I'll be able to play around with the stonework to conceal the, the outlet from the filter. Once that's done and I've completed all of the surround here, I can get the pond drained and cleaned and remove all of the, the muck and cement and sand and bits and pieces that's fallen in and then refill the pond with the reserved original pond water and a bit of a tap up, uh, top up with tap water and we're ready to go. There we go, so you can see I've backfilled this area behind the pond liner with um, just a, a mix of rapid cement, another four to one mix. It's gone off very quickly, about half an hour for this and it, and it goes pretty hard. So I can pile up the soil up here now to, to hide the edging of the pond liner. And once I've built up the soil on this side, any gaps over here, I can just backfill with a, a very sort of wet liquid mix of rapid set cement and just fill it up to a few inches below the stone. And then when I cover that entirely with soil, that will make sure that there's not any soil in direct contact with, with pond water. And that will help to reduce and minimise wicking and, and soaking from the pond. Coming on, weather's been kind to me today. So with a bit of luck we should have it finished by tomorrow. Good morning, well this is, should be, the last day on the job today and as ever on, this, the, uh, on the last days like this when everything kind of frantically happens all at once. The pond needs to be drained and cleaned and then refilled with all the reserved original pond water. Uh, I've got some bags of small 8-10mm to 10 mil gravel that I want to mix up with the soil around the edge of the pond here. There's no overflow in this pond, the garden is very level, there's not any suitable drains nearby and so we're relying on the surrounding border here acting as a sort of a natural soak away, an overflow to the pond. So to keep that as free draining as possible, I want to mix up some grit and some gravel with the soil um, just to allow that water to sort of percolate away. If needs be, during very heavy sort of weather events like the, the, the rain we had over the weekend, we can use the filtration system to discharge water away from the pond. It's a bit of a nuisance to have to do that, but in, in some ponds it's just not easy to put an overflow. Um, I've got to put the planting back into the pond, put all the plants over here. Some of these are going to have to be split and potted on, um, and I'll capture all of that on camera. So lots to do this morning and today, and i better crack on. So a little tip here guys, and a very important one. I'm just working on recommissioning the filtration system and removing the original inlet from the pump, from the pond to the filtration system, which is this super flex hose and this isn't too bad um, but very quickly after a couple of years of being outside it will start to get very brittle under UV and eventually will split. I reckon that will last another year or two and that will start to go. So I'm replacing all of that pipe work with the heavier duty sort of rubberized version of 
but in doing so, having removed this from the pump, I found that the hose tail connected to the pump, and this is a multi-step hose tail, it hasn't been cut to the appropriate size pipe work. So on this hose tail, you've got one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, 25 mil, 32 mil, 38 stroke, 40 mil. Uh, and of course we're using the, the larger 40 mil pipe work here. So this should have been cut off at the initial installation many years ago. And by not cutting it off, you're really reducing the flow that the pump can, can produce from friction loss. Obviously there's a much smaller amount of water that can go through a small aperture than a bigger, a bigger aperture. So I'm glad I found that and I'll cut that off. And this pump, which is a fantastic Aquamax Eco Premium 8000, will deliver a much better flow as a result. I need a new saw. There we go. So now we're getting the full benefit of the pump, being able to breathe, being able to perform efficiently and not being restricted by that much, much smaller hole there. Well, after a busy morning, I've now completed the job. Um, well, nearly completed. There's a couple of things that need to be addressed. The main one is that the filtration system is going to be changed um, over the next couple of weeks. Um, it's a gravity discharge, not a pump discharge. The current filtration system is a pressurised unit, and that's why there's a very, very powerful flow coming over that spill stone, which never looks natural. If you wanted to create a cascade with a direct pressure from a pump, filter you would need to either be able to, to turn down the pump slightly or ideally be able to have a another additional outlet to act as a bleed so that you can turn down the spill but have the rest of the flow bypassing the cascade and going in, into the pond but once we change that for a much larger diameter um, three inch pipe coming out of the new Awaza filtermatic filter that's going to look very natural give a much nicer flow and a decent sound I'm going to hurry this up because the weather's turning again it's been a rubbish day uh, but I'll just quickly pan around and, and show you what's been going on. Here's a piece of the original edging, just so you can compare. We'll get rid of that now. I can go in the skip. And instead, replace with this lovely sandstone edging. Now, as always, you know, the rock work is really just the structure, the skeleton of the, of the pond. And that needs to be concealed and softened with lots of plants. There's plenty of scope in the borders around here now for planting. Uh, I've just put in a, a few little plugs of creeping jenny uh, in a couple of places here just to break that stonework and just to give you the impression of what it's like having plants um, cascading over the side. And the cascade will look very different, as I say, once we've got the, the gravity filter. I'm Ed from Crystal Clear Aquatics. Thank you very much for watching. I'm off. Thank you.